Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Ange. So, Ange, today we're, we're talking about something interesting came up, okay? okay? So, my son wants to buy a house here in Florida. Right. So, we figured it out, and we figured it out that it's really difficult to buy a house, especially a first-time home buyer, okay? Yeah, yeah, it is. And now we're going into 2025, and this video is what, what this video is about is can the average earner really afford to own a home? Okay? okay. Can the average person really stay till the end and I'll give you my answer and some ways that I think that they would be able to. All right. So that's really important, okay? So that's what this video is about. Can the average earner really afford to buy a home? But who's the average earner? I'm going to go over that. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to explain all of that. In the meantime, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. We're working on a podcast, and it's going to be really cool. Don't want you to miss it. But here we go. As of 2020, 2023, a medium household income in Florida was approximately 72200 Wow. I, really? Yeah, but what I did is I took the income of a household, so two people working. All right. Okay. Yeah, you know, there might be two people. All right, yeah, okay. All right. And we have to be really realistic for this, okay? And when I picked out a house, I picked out like a start home. I didn't pick out... So like a maybe two, two to $300,000 house? Yeah, I didn't pick yeah. out a home that, you know, um, is Five really expensive, rooms, yeah. but I didn't pick out a, a manufactured home either, you know? All right, so there's a lot more to it than just a mortgage, okay? Yeah, it's totally. The average mortgage payment in Florida is $2,092. All righty. That's what we came up with. Okay, that, that sounds that sounds reasonable. Okay, all right, that's reasonable, right? Yeah. Remember, the average income is seventy two thousand two hundred. The property taxes. The average property taxes is going to be two hundred and eighty one dollars per month statewide. So was it coming out to you like three grand? Yeah, I didn't I didn't write that part down, but it's two eighty one a month. We, okay. It came out to the average. I all took right. I took taxes. I get what you're saying. You're figuring out the mortgage for the month. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, this is. I, I'm doing it for like the average person coming to Florida, and, and this is probably true for a lot of states and yes. a lot of other places. Yeah. Homeowners insurance, and we know homeowners insurance in Florida is just stupid. Yeah. Okay. Crazy expensive. And I know a, pe a lot of people with homeowners insurance that they're going bare. That basically that means they're not taking insurance, but they don't have a mortgage either. Yeah, you can't. If you have a mortgage, you have to have homeowners insurance. Right, and a lot of times in your flood zone, you have to have flood insurance. You have to have flood insurance too. too. Yeah, <laughs> two, two insurances on top of your mortgage. So, as a first-time home buyer, you know when he wants to buy a house, he's going to have a mortgage. So, I have to count it. It's not like he's paying cash. Yeah, you know, he's only putting down what ten or twenty percent. Well, if he puts down twenty percent, he saves on the the. the the mortgage premium insurance. Yeah, the mortgage insurance, you yeah. know, and basically, so, so basically, you look, you're still looking at around three to four thousand dollars a year, and, a month. No, a year insurance. Oh, insurance, yeah, yeah. insurance, yeah. Three to four thousand. Okay, so let's just say it comes out to three hundred and thirty-three dollars a month for the insurance. Okay, for the insurance. Alrighty, we'll keep it. We'll keep it really smooth. But now, every house that we were looking at. Pretty much every place in Florida, it, it seems like it's a flood zone these days. Yeah, they, the FEMA really rewrote the, <laughs> it, the the line. It really did. I mean, it's crazy how. So, big like every house that we went and we went to check out, it was like, okay, it's flood zone, flood zone, flood zone. I'm I'm three and a half miles from the Gulf, and I'm in a flood zone, and I'm 26 feet above ev uh, uh, elevation, and I'm in a flood zone. You know what's funny about this house? I checked it out. the The flood zone. You know, because one of the one of the most important things when you're buying a house in Florida is elevation. Yes. Okay. It's the most important thing. If you're buying a house in Florida, make sure you check the elevation. What you do is find the highest level the water was at at one point in that place. Check all the records. Check everything. And if they say, "Hey, water came up six, seven feet, the highest," you know, around here, then find a house that's so, 10, 15 well, feet easily above that line. Yeah. Then you have no worries. Yeah, you have no worries. And yeah. that's basically what I did with this house. Yeah. Even though right behind me, there's a big, big retention pond, and I, I have like a little stream for runoff and everything, I'm not going to get flooded. Yeah, Actually, it came up, right? Well, it came up quite a bit, but what happens is, and I knew this when I was buying it, that this behind me will flood 
and I feel horrible. Don't tell me this is, you know, it's bad for them. But it floods that neighborhood over yeah, there. Yeah, it all goes that way. Yeah, because you have the dip right here. You have a big dip. Yeah, but it's the elevation here. And it's, you know, what I did is I just looked at the public records. So this is the elevation for this property. And then I, I looked at that because we were looking at that neighborhood. We actually came look at that house. And I'm like, hey, that elevation is eight feet, just hypothetically eight yeah. feet. This one over here is 16 feet. That house over there was a nicer house. <laughs> but it was underwater. <laughs> no, it was never flooded. It was never flooded. Okay? Even, in, even in the last go round? No, I don't know. I'll tell you what happened yeah. to that neighborhood. But when we were buying back in 2011, that neighborhood never flooded okay. that I knew about. The house was nicer um, than this house. And it was actually a little bit cheaper. So... But then I looked at the elevation and said, you know what? I'll go for the more expensive house, not as nice, but higher by 10 feet. Yeah, because you, uh, this is a, that's a much better bargain. So fast forward seven years later, I think it was like 2018, that neighborhood got flooded, including mm -hmm. that house. Wow. So you're talking like seven years went by, and, you, and now that property is probably not, as a, not worth what it was when the person who bought it. Well, I mean, the prices, all the prices went up, but the problem too is now they definitely have to pay, you know, uh, pay for flood insurance. And don't forget, everybody that got hit here with the hurricanes, they got to pay for flood insurance. And now if you're selling it, you have to disclose legally, this house has been flooded. Yep. So, I mean, the, well, this house hasn't been. No, you, this house. But you have this, to say that the house has was flooded or was you, not. Yeah, yeah. If you're selling your house and your house was flooded in Florida, you now have to say, "Hey, I got to disclose this." You know. Yeah. And I'll will tell you a funny story. Is like, I was doing an inspection last year, and these people come in and they couldn't decide at which house. And the couple came in and it was a water coastal property, and they said to me, "Jimmy, it's crazy. Every house here has been redone." That tells you something. And I was like, do you, do you know why every house has been redone? They're like, no, I just guess like, they, you know, and I didn't have, I have the heart to tell them. And I couldn't really say it. I said, do some research into it because maybe it's coincidence that 10 houses in a row. Oh, all, all been re rebuilt. Re rebuilt. Yeah. But I knew it was because of the flood. They all got, re they all got flooded. Yeah. And, and the realtor is the one that has to tell them that you can't be the one, right? No, it's a, I'm not. I'm not a realtor, yeah. but the whole thing is, I don't think back then that they had to disclose it. They just fixed it up and then they sold it again. Oh, but so the, the rules have probably changed. The rules have changed. Yeah, yeah. I think I it changed it. off of that one and everything. Okay, so flood is a huge thing. So if you're buying a house, make sure it's elevation. Okay, utilities. The monthly utility costs, including electricity, water, gas, average approximately. This is like a small house. Okay, that I'm talking about for for my son. Four hundred and eight dollars a month. That's hang on, hang on. For for water and yeah, I like and I electric. Did. Yeah, like I said, hey, be, let's go really, really cheap. But still, that's like no, like my electric bill on this house is six hundred dollars a month. Get out of here. You yeah. know what mine is for two? Well, it's every two months. Why my, is it? Why electric, is it? Why is your electric every two months? My, mine's my, every month. Mine's every two months. I pay one hundred and seventy-four dollars. Okay, during the winter, I probably pay less. I probably pay four hundred. Four. I pay that on the highest in the heat when the air conditioning is running like crazy. <laughs> no, I have two air conditions going. Oh, you have two. I only have one. Yeah. I have the pool going, and my wife likes it at sixty-eight degrees. Okay, that explains. Enough said. <laughs> Six, Sixty. You, you you could hang meat in my house. Enough said. You don't got to talk. To keep a house at sixty-eight degrees with two I systems. Literally, I literally yeah. had to, and this house is really not a thousand a month. Yeah, and I literally have to, you know, I change the windows to impact windows, which yeah. are more more efficient. So let's just say four hundred eight dollars, okay? Maintenance. All right. Obviously, I've been doing a lot of maintenance to my house, but the average maintenance I figured out was going to be three hundred twenty six dollars a month. Him. Now, now is that maintenance as an HOA cutting nope. grass? Everything? No, 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 not HOA. Just cutting, just cutting grass. grass. Cutting, oh, cutting grass, God. fixing things. Water heater broke. Yeah, yeah, you always got to have that that cushion. Yeah, in case something else. electrical problem. Yep. Yeah, something. Okay, yeah. so we have to. But, like, I took. I, I since I'm doing inspections, I know a lot of houses what maintenance they need and what the average is. Yeah. Okay, that came out to three hundred twenty six dollars. Okay, now. This is an HOA, but but 
I'm just putting HOA fees because that could go from really low to really expensive yeah. really fast. Yeah, overnight. Okay? Yep. So $100 a month I put on that. $100, that's it. $100. And that's being extremely reasonable. Okay. So let's say his income, his, his expenses or your expenses is $3,615. That's, that's for having the house for the month? For the month. Okay. With mortgage, taxes, insurance, Everything, and all that yeah, stuff. Okay. okay, yeah. Now, let's say the income comes out to 6000 a month. So I'm basically taking the 72000 and I'm not even taking taxes out. I'm not even taking health insurance out. So yeah, so you so, and the six thousand you're saying is what he would be, t like what he money he'd be taking home every month from. Well, work. not him in particular, but Anybody. the average the average yeah, person. That's what I'm saying, yeah, yeah, the average person. So, um, the gross gross income coming in will say six thousand. Okay? okay, and then you, and then what was, and you had it figured out to how much was being thir spent? Thirty six fifteen, which leaves them leaves who's ever buying this with this scenario, two thousand three hundred eighty five dollars. A month to so, live on. Yeah, so if you have a car payment, you still got to pay your car. Okay, let me finish this, and we're <laughs> going to go over all that. So let's break that down weekly. Okay, that's they have to live on five hundred and fifty dollars a week. A week. Now that's and and but you're only talking like, are you talking a family or are you talking one person? No, I'm talking about a family. Wow. Because the average household, if you guys look at it, the average household is seventy two thousand. Okay, yeah, because you were saying to uh, uh, a husband and wife, and if they have a kid or two or three, yeah, wow. So you try living. Me and Tanya, we went out to eat at a restaurant, and it wasn't a fancy restaurant. Heck, you know, a couple of drinks, food, dinner, and everything. The bill came out to almost a hundred bucks. Yeah, it's crazy. You're better off going to Cracker Barrel. <laughs> it's still, you go to Cracker Barrel, you, you're still paying. For, I went to Cracker Barrel, no, I'm not kidding, for breakfast, and it was still 40 bucks. Wow. I, I've never eaten in Cracker I've never been in one. So I've you never, just hit Cracker Barrel. I, because I see them everywhere, that's why. I never have been, even been in one. Okay, so now you're at 550 you just spent $100 on dinner, and now you're at 450 Now, gas? Car payment and car insurance and okay, the kids? Okay, the average car payment went to seven hundred dollars i know it's like believe me i know i know what i'm paying so they can't afford a car how about it going to disney i think disney tickets were like write that off That's 250 bucks ahead it's like just just cancel that trip okay so me and tanya we're just two people and I, i'm not i'm not kidding you guys we're just two people we go to supermarket weekly we probably spend at the market three hundred a week. I, I I go through at least just for myself, hundred and twenty five a week, easy. Yeah. So yeah, we spend about three hundred. You know, so basically on the average income, I don't see how it could be done. No, it can't. I mean, you literally have to like you know cut out a lot of things. And I and I don't and I don't see things getting better. It doesn't matter who's president. The only way things would get better is if homes get cheaper. Well, not even not necessarily even the home getting cheaper. It's the crazy insurances because the home. Well, if you buy the house, it'll stay that one price. You know, for the thirty-year mortgage. But every year, the insurance is going to go more and more and more. Look, look at what this county did, okay? This county, all right? Our taxes went up hugely. And they had the most construction. They were building everywhere, and they get, were getting impact fees. There was thousands of people moving just into this county, okay? Moving in. And every time they build a house, and they build a house every five feet, the county and the state gets money. They get what's yeah. called impact fees. Yeah. So you figured, and then we pretty much were in a recession, in my opinion. We were in a re recession, and then we got hit with heavy, heavy inflation. Yes. But they're so smart. They're like, hey, you know, let's put the biggest tax tax on everybody's insurance. Yeah, let's tax everyone when they, they have no money to start with. Yeah. 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 I know. And then the funny thing is the people that got flooded, they can't even live in their houses, okay? And their taxes went up. And they said, you got to pay for it. I know. It's crazy. If you really think about it, 
if you had less taxes, like especially like a paycheck, you have you have a payroll tax, you're getting mm-hmm. it. If you took those taxes away, you and the only tax you paid on a check, just for argument's sake, was Social Security and nothing else, no federal, no state. They would make more money, the state and the federal government, in taxes because if you have more, you'll spend more. And if insurances were less, everybody would have insurance and they'd have good insurance. Instead, you have people. Some people have good insurance, and some people have you know really bad insurance. Like they. So have what are you saying? Minimum. They have like. So what I'm saying is, if if you drop certain things, like if they dropped insurance prices, more people would take better policies. They yeah. make Everyone would make money. But the whole thing it's a is, supply and demand. here's the problem with insurance. Okay, and I'm not an insurance agent, but there's freaking a lot of fraud. Oh, it's it's an, an unbelievable amount of You know, fraud. everybody, I think everybody just on my block got a free roof except me. I'm the only person who paid cash for it. And you that's know? and that's the reason why insurance goes through the ceiling. So your roof is say just say for argument's sake, 20 grand. Okay, we'll say $20,000, right? And then someone puts a claim in the insurance company's not going to lose a dime. They're going to make sure that you pay through the nose for that. It's like when someone breaks a water heater in the house. And then they, they go and they put it they run it under insurance. You can go buy a water heater in, in Home Depot for 350 bucks. Well, you know, the, and put the only, in, let's, let's, put let's correct in. a little bit of that information. If the water heater breaks, insurance doesn't cover it. If the water heater breaks and you're not home, it causes damage, then you can yeah, file a but, claim. But, you, but what I'm trying to say is the, where the water heater is sitting 99% of the time is in the garage. Right, so okay, maybe some sheetrock went bad or something. Yeah, if you, you, if you, you didn't you catch can, it, but yeah, if it just but you can you can fix it even if it's even if it's fi- bad, you can pretty much fix it out of your own pocket. But people will run that claim through, and that claim might only be for like thirty five hundred dollars, right? But what do you think? The insurance company's not going to jack your rates? Of course they are. Well, it's not even it's not even the insurance company jacking your rates. The insurance companies are jacking everybody's rates. Everybody that got a listen, there's a lot of legit claims. Okay, I don't want you guys beating me up saying, "Oh, you know, I had a claim, but it, it was from the hurricane or this." I know that. I know there's a lot of legit claims. Oh, okay? totally are. All right. So, and most of them are legit claims, but. The people that committed fraud and tried to get a new roof because their roof is 20, 25 years old, and they're like, well, I don't want to pay for it, and I'll just hire this person, they'll sh- and sue my insurance company, and my insurance company will settle. So now the insurance company has to pay the lawyers, give the person, the public adjuster, their share, and then you get a roof that's not always that great, to tell you, be honest with you. It's not that great. They don't care. You didn't pay for it. You know? And then... The insurance companies will say, okay, we, you know, we had a big loss on this. A $15,000 roof ended up costing them seventy, eighty thousand. dollars What do you think they're going to do? They're going to eat it? No. no. They're, they're going to give... Pass the cost on. They're going to pass that cost on to... Everybody. Everybody, including me, yeah. you know, if it's my insurance company. Yeah. They're not in the business to, to lose money. And it's, yeah, it's a sore subject for me because I like, I'm like... When I do inspections on roofs, I'm like, hey, you know, the roof is not good. You, you know, it's... 26 years old and the granules are lost and the sun here is blaring it's florida they're like oh i'll just go file an insurance claim if you're saying it's not good i'm saying this it wasn't damaged i'm saying it's just, it's just wore out tear. yeah wear it's and worn tear. out from the it, rain it, the it reads lifespan but they're like no we'll just file an insurance claim and they changed the rules a little bit now they did change the rules but i don't know what's going on because i still see people trying to file claims for their roof. Well, you get those other guys. You ever get those guys that knock on your door selling roofs, and they tell you that like the state they, is you know paying. What, this is this is this is how stupid some of those people are. Okay, because yeah. like I have people. I live in a no solicitation. Um, As community. I do too. Yeah. Okay, but they don't care. So no, they, they come, come in. in. This this kid comes and knocks on my door. Okay, and remember I'm a home inspector. I inspect roofs every day. This was a week ago. <laughs> I believe it. He says, hey, I'm looking at your roof, and we're doing your neighbor's roof down the street. Um, you know, you, you, should we give you a quote for a new roof? It looks like it's time. My roof is a year old. <laughs> okay. So, so I decided to play with him a little bit. So I, w- I, I, and I went out there and stuff and everything, and I'm like, so we're looking at the roof, and I'm like, well, what do you think? He's like, well, you know, I got to go up there, but, you know, I can see it lifting, like granule loss. Meanwhile, this is a brand new roof, okay? Like, it's, I use, I got the best company to do it. I got peel and stick down, 
great shingles because I know what I I'm looking at. I can see it at. from here. You got artisan. Yeah. You can see those are really, that's like 30 years shingles. Yeah, great shingles, everything, okay? I knew what I was doing, okay? But the kid didn't know what he was doing. So I told him, I said, listen, turn around, okay? My truck is there and my truck has like, home inspections you know roof it's actually master home inspector on it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know i was like dude look at that the roof is a year old he's like oh is it i was like yeah because you want a new roof I'll probably get it for you for free and like that's the gimmick yeah. that's the gimmick yeah yeah and those those aren't actual roofs i saw how they do them it's kind of like it's almost like the the roofing is on like a like a four by four sheet like of paneling or something and they put it on nah, it looks I, very I, I, flat i don't know, I, don't know I saw is. someone in my neighborhood do it maybe a metal roof you're talking about no no it's 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 like a it's a it's a it's like a very thin tile and it just makes no sense you know yeah, they I, came I, to my house because i'm getting my roof redone in february and they they came to my house selling it and the guy the guy was he brought in showed me some samples and i was like this is garbage yeah i don't know what that is i've never yeah. seen it before um but in in the meantime Okay, so can the average person in 2025, average income earner, buy a house? The answer is no. The only way, this is, this is my opinion. The younger generations are going to buy homes if they buy it with more than the wife or the girlfriend or the boyfriend or whoever. Yeah, Okay. another, another person, yeah. Another income. Or they inherit the home. Yeah. Or, you know, the parents, if they have money, help out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or what I'm seeing now is a lot of people in the family moving in together. Like I did an inspection recently. Not, it was a brother and sister buying the home. Okay, so living in a house together. But they're also having, one is married and the other one has a boyfriend or girlfriend, I don't know. But it's gonna be four people in there, so it's more community. And then I saw there another house that the parents are moving in. Yeah, it's crazy, it's, it's a lot. I mean, there was an article, you actually you talked about this in a video recently, there was an article about two weeks ago that said the average home buyer is, I think it was either 56 or 58 yeah, years old. Yeah, of course. For the, and the first time, first time average home buyer was in the, their later 50s. No, no, the average home buyer, the average first time home buyer was 36. In 2024? Four, yeah, it was 36. And before God. that, it was the average, average first time home buyer was 20, 26 um that was 2020 and then it jumped it to, to 36 and then now but the average person that's going out and buying a house it's is 56 50, years old it's, because it's people like it's taking them that long to get the money <laughs> it, it's it, well it's people like us that we could sell our houses and, and we could go buy other houses in cash yeah like mine's been paid off for, for years i mean like many many years yeah but so like you you don't even have to have insurance i do though i have homeowners insurance yeah but everything. technically if you got into trouble you didn't have to have it no so, yeah I, so yeah i don't see any other ways of people uh of people buying a home other than those ways i think it's going to be really difficult i don't think anything's going to change and unless they do something with insurance property taxes and houses and you don't think people that bought houses for you know, five hundred thousand. They're not going to turn around and sell them for three hundred thousand dollars now. That those things are over with. No, it's, uh, those short sales because the banks aren't going to lose. Oh, I think I, I think a lot of people are going to start walking away from their homes. Yeah, because it's it's because the mortgages are just too high, and all you need to do is just miss one payment, like you know, and you're you're done with. You know, you miss well, the one mortgage well, payment. Well, yeah, if you miss one mortgage payment, then it's it's harder to catch. That's up. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, done with. You know, yeah. it's like it's it's just a steamroller then at that yeah. point. Anyways, yeah. that's today's video. Do me a favor, you guys, where you live, tell us. Do you think the average person where you live could afford to buy a house or average family? Let us know. In the meantime, watch this video right here. I picked it out just for you guys. It's a really good one. And consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. Thank you and have a great day.